Hello, my name is Elaine Quinn. I train interpreters and I also train providers to work with interpreters in the healthcare setting. The population of tuberculosis patients in the United States has become increasingly diverse. Currently, over half of TB patients are non-US born and an increasing number speak a language other than English. This often makes it a challenge to communicate. The Francis J. Curry National Tuberculosis Center is meeting this challenge by developing this video to help TB healthcare providers communicate effectively with TB patients who have non-English speaking backgrounds. Using a trained interpreter is always preferred when working with patients who speak little or no English. Our program will demonstrate the skills that a trained interpreter uses to interact with a TB healthcare provider and patient. When a trained interpreter is not available, a bilingual or multilingual staff member may be requested to help interpret. This video and accompanying viewer's guide describe some fundamental skills to help equip bilingual or multilingual staff who may be asked to function in this role. And it also serves as a guide for how healthcare providers can work effectively with interpreters. The viewer's guide expands on the topics covered today. The Office of Civil Rights has developed guidelines based on Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that assist us in providing appropriate language services to patients with limited English proficiency. For more information, please refer to a summary of this document in your viewer's guide. To prevent a common misunderstanding, let's distinguish between interpretation and translation. Interpretation involves conversion of spoken words from one language to another and requires the use of an interpreter. Translation involves conversion of written text from one language to another and requires the services of a translator. Although there are similarities between these two disciplines, they involve a different set of skills. This video addresses only interpretation skills. Let's take a look at the goals and responsibilities of an interpreter. An interpreter facilitates the interpreted session to ensure the same quality and understanding as that of an English-speaking patient encounter. An interpreter helps people communicate effectively when there are language and cultural barriers. An interpreter accurately and completely interprets everything that is heard without changing the intended meaning of the message in any way. Although some words may need to be changed to account for the differences in cultural meanings. An interpreter interprets with the highest standard of ethics and confidentiality. One of the first steps in facilitating an interpreted session is to set the stage. This is done with a pre-session. There are two types of pre-sessions one between the interpreter and the TB patient, and one between the healthcare provider and the interpreter. The pre-session ensures that the patient and healthcare provider understand their roles and what will happen in the interpreted session. Let's see an example of a pre-session between a trained healthcare interpreter and our patient, Mrs. Chan. Tai 一陣間你要見我舉一舉手,之後畀你聽,請你停一停,因為可能我會問一些問題。The pre-session established the expectations, roles, and seating arrangements for the interaction between the patient and healthcare provider. Although confidentiality is a given policy in health departments, it's very important to explain and emphasize confidentiality to patients. Let's see who can serve as a healthcare interpreter. A trained professional interpreter from an external agency, a trained bilingual or multilingual staff member, or a trained community volunteer. 
Although a trained interpreter whose language fluency has been assessed is always preferred, other people who may be asked to help include an untrained bilingual or multilingual healthcare staff member or someone from the patient's community. Although this practice is discouraged, it may be the only option when there is simply no other interpreter available. However, be aware that potential problems can come up regarding unfamiliarity with medical terms, maintaining confidentiality, and with the person's language fluency. So, who shouldn't serve as an interpreter? Children under 18 years of age, the patient's family and friends, and other patients or visitors. Planning is required when asking an untrained bilingual staff member or community volunteer to interpret. It is the healthcare provider's responsibility to conduct a pre-session with the staff who is asked to help. It is also helpful to provide the untrained bilingual staff member or community volunteer with disease-specific education materials and any questions that will be asked of the patient and request that he or she review the materials and questions in advance. To decrease the risk of miscommunication errors during the interpreted session, the healthcare provider should cover the following points with the untrained bilingual person. First, request that the interpreter maintain confidentiality. Then, describe proper positioning by placing seating arrangements appropriately. Also request that the interpreter convey messages in the first person voice and request that the interpreter's clarifications be made in the third person voice. Remind the interpreter not to add, change, or leave out any information spoken by the provider or patient. And finally, emphasize that there are no side conversations between the patient and interpreter or provider and interpreter. Let's take a look at how this might be done. Hey, Drew. I'm glad I caught you before we meet with Mrs. Petrova. Mrs. Petrova doesn't speak English, only Russian. So your interpretation will help me with her contact investigation. I understand. Good. Mrs. Petrova already identified people who might have been exposed to her when her TB was infectious. I want to ask her to remember if there's anyone she forgot to tell me about. Please remember that whatever Mrs. Petrova says shouldn't be shared with anyone without her permission. Sure, no problem. To make sure I direct my conversation to her and not to you, let me show you where to sit. Let's say Mrs. Petrova sits here. You'll sit here, beside and a little behind her. Mm -hmm. And I'll sit here so she can direct her conversation to me. That's fine. Uh, please interpret every word that is said without paraphrasing, always maintaining the meaning of what is said, and don't add any of your own comments. I'll pause often so you can interpret accurately, and I'll ask Mrs. Petrova to do the same. Got it. That'll help. And please be sure to use the first-person voice. For example, if Mrs. Petrova says, I live with my husband and three daughters, please don't say, she lives with her husband and three daughters. So I should say it like she did, I live with my husband. Right. And if you don't understand something one of us says, feel free to interrupt. Okay. But be sure to let both of us know that you're stopping the conversation to clarify something by signaling for a pause and saying the interpreter requests clarification. Okay. Do you have any questions before we get started? Well, just to let you know, it may take me longer to say it in Russian than it takes for you to say it in English. Okay, so I'll be sure not to interrupt you. Oh, yes, please avoid any side conversation with the patient or with me. Anything else? No, I think I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Obviously, it's difficult for an untrained individual to remember all of these guidelines. If staff or volunteers are requested to interpret often, Additional training in interpretation is strongly advised. Now let's describe and demonstrate specific interpretation skills. First, consecutive. When one speaker starts to say a few sentences, then pauses for the interpreter to interpret. This process is repeated with the next speaker, providing continuous interpretation until the dialogue is complete. Second, simultaneous when the interpreter speaks at the same time as the person who is originating the message. And third, sight translation, the oral translation of a written document. See if you can identify the different styles in this next scenario. Let's meet another patient, Mrs. Lee, and watch her interpreter demonstrate three modes or styles of interpreting. Hello, can I help you? Hi, my mom has an appointment with the doctor. Okay, what's your name? Diana. Diana, what's your mother's name? 
My mom's name is Wai Sung Lee, and she speaks Toy Sam, but she also understands Cantonese. Okay. Please just wait one second, and I'm going to get an interpreter for you, okay? Hi, Lisa. Can you come to the front? I need some interpreting. Yes. Thank you. She'll be right out. Hi, Lisa. Hi. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Lee and her daughter Diana. Mrs. Lee understands Cantonese. Okay. Hey, Tatai, they hold. Well, Lisa, come on, Joe, Bonnie, Joe, find it. Oh, boy, I'm going to do it. I'm going to find it. You're going to say, Gong, you're going to find it. 哦，你今日能夠帶埋你個女嚟幫你翻譯咧，非常之好。咁我哋呢度咧係費傑克診所，咁我哋係訓練咗係特別幫助去翻譯一啲英文嘅醫學名詞噶。哦，咁、嗯、唔知我可唔可以翻譯咧？而你所講嘅一切嘅説話，如果冇你嘅準許之下，我係唔可以係泄露出去噶。好，唔該曬。Mrs. Lee，I see you have an appointment at two o'clock. 你睇，我見到你個預約係兩點鐘。Have some forms I need for you to fill out. 有份字係需要你去填寫同埋簽名。And this is another form that I need for you to sign, but unfortunately I don't have a Chinese version of the form yet. But Lisa can help read it to you in Chinese. 你有份表咧係我哋暫時未有呢個中文譯本，咁啊 Lisa 咧就會教你去點樣填寫呢份表噶啦。嗱，呢個係你嘅姓名。呢個係你嘅出生日期。Did you see the three styles of interpreting? Let's go over them. First, we saw consecutive. Most of the interpreting was done in the consecutive mode, where one speaker starts to say a few sentences, then pauses for the interpreter to interpret. Mrs. Lee, I see you have an appointment at two o'clock. 你睇，我見到你嘅預約係兩點鐘。This is the most appropriate choice in the clinic setting. Did you notice how the interpreter used the first-person voice, or I statements, to speak for the patient and the receptionist? Using the first-person voice reinforces the primary relationship between the patient and the provider, as well as maintains the accuracy and completeness of the verbal interaction. Then we saw simultaneous. During simultaneous interpretation, the interpreter speaks at the same time as the person who is originating the message. This is mostly used in medical emergencies and when the interpreter is unable to request a pause. Finally, we saw sight translation, or the oral translation of a written document. 呢個個姓同埋個名。The interpreter will read forms and documents that have not been translated into the patient's language. Sometimes patients have difficulty reading in their own language, even though they speak it fluently. Therefore, please be aware that documents written in the patient's own language may still need to be read aloud. Now that you've seen three styles you can use, let's look at how to accurately and completely interpret the session itself. Accuracy and completeness, along with confidentiality, are three key ethical standards anyone serving as an interpreter must follow. For a more complete code of ethics, please refer to your viewer's guide. The accuracy and completeness of an interpreted session depends on both the interpreter and healthcare provider knowing their roles. The flow of communication is generally the interpreter's responsibility. Deciding what information must be relayed and understood is the healthcare provider's responsibility. When healthcare providers work with interpreters, they should focus on the patient and maintain the quality of the interaction in speaking directly to the patient, as in an English-only speaking environment. Here are some guidelines to help healthcare providers maintain that focus. Clearly state the information to be relayed. And ensure that it is understood by the patient. Maintain eye contact and speak directly to the patient. Use first-person voice instead of using "ask her" or "him" phrases. Use first-person voice and say, "How are you feeling today?" Speak clearly at a moderate pace and pause often. Do not use acronyms, healthcare jargon, or abbreviations, as these can easily be accidentally misinterpreted. Ask questions to gather information about the patient's symptoms, duration of illness, and their perceptions of their illness in a culturally appropriate manner, 
and in a way that's understood by the interpreter and can be relayed accurately to the patient. The interpreter will facilitate the interpreted session to ensure that all that is said is conveyed accurately and completely. Accuracy applies to the actual words being used in the interpretation, and completeness includes the tone, the gesture, and the volume of what is being said and heard. A few techniques to ensure accuracy and completeness are appropriate positioning, meaning to adjust the seating arrangements to promote the primary relationship between patient and healthcare provider, first person voice, interpreting what is said as it is said, hand signal, indicating a pause to interpret accurately or for clarification, third person voice, indicates the interpreter speaks for him or herself in order to clarify. Transparency, informing both parties when the interpreter seeks clarification. And note-taking, brief notes to help the interpreter remember accurately. Let's take a look at how some of these techniques are used. In this next scenario, we meet Ms. Morales, an HIV-positive patient and substance user who has been exposed to a case of TB. The pre-session has already been done. Hello, Ms. Morales. My name is Lynn Matthews. I'm one of the doctors here at the TB clinic. I see that you've already met Yolanda. Is it okay if Yolanda helps interpret for us? Hola, señorita Morales. Soy Lynn Matthews, una de las doctoras de aquí de la clínica de tuberculosis. Y veo que ya conoció a Yolanda. ¿Está bien que nos interprete Yolanda? Yes. Okay. Your TB skin test came back negative, and your x-ray shows that you don't have TB disease. Since you've been exposed to the TB bacteria and because of your HIV status, we would like to give you medicine so that you won't develop TB disease. Su prueba de tuberculosis resultó negativa y sus radiografías muestran que no tiene enfermedad de tuberculosis, pero como ha sido expuesta a la tuberculosis y dada su condición de VIH, queremos darle tratamiento para que no se enferme de tuberculosis. You'll need to come to the clinic every day for nine months in order to take your medicine. Deberá venir a nuestra clínica diariamente por nueve meses para tomar su medicina. ¿Nueve meses? Nine months. No sé, uh, tengo que trabajar. Uh, no puedo faltar al trabajo, necesito el dinero. I don't know. I, I have to work. I can't miss work. I need the money. Nine months can seem like a long time. If coming to us is difficult for you, then one of our staff who does DOT can come to your home and deliver the medicine to you every day. Nueve meses pa puede parecer largo tiempo. La intérprete necesita hacer una pregunta. Interpreter requests clarification of DOT. DOT means directly observed therapy. When a healthcare worker or another designated person comes to your home to bring you your medicine and watches you swallow each dose of the prescribed drug. Nueve meses puede parecer largo tiempo, pero podemos enviar a un trabajador que da tratamiento bajo observación directa a que le entregue la medicina diariamente. Necesitará ver que se la tome. When would be a good time for you? ¿Cuándo le sería conveniente? A la, a la una de la tarde. 1 p.m. Yes, we can do that. Sí, claro, podemos hacerlo así. Good. Someone will bring you your medicine tomorrow at one o'clock. Muy bien, alguien le traerá su medicina mañana a la una de la tarde. Let's review how the interpreter used skills to ensure accuracy and completeness and also supported the primary relationship between the patient and healthcare provider. First, positioning. The seating arrangement is one tool that Yolanda used to support the communication between Ms. Morales and Dr. Matthews without interfering or becoming a part of the conversation. Another tool that Yolanda used was first person voice. Yolanda accurately and completely conveyed messages using I, me, or my. For example, Instead of saying, she says she can't miss work, she needs the money, Yolanda interpreted Miss Morales' exact words. I can't miss work. I need the money. Then we saw Yolanda taking notes on things that can be easily transposed, such as numbers, dosages, and times. 
We also saw a transparent clarification when Yolanda intervened and stopped the conversation with her hand signal. She began to make a transparent clarification by switching to third-person voice and referring to herself as the interpreter. She was transparent when she told Ms. Morales in Spanish that she was going to ask the doctor a question about a technical term. The actual clarification occurred when she asked the doctor, the interpreter requests clarification of DOT. We've seen a number of examples in the clinic setting. Now let's see what to do out in the field when no interpreter is available. What options are available to TB staff who are out in the field and require interpretation services? One option is to bring an interpreter along. Another may be to call the TB clinic and ask an interpreter or bilingual staff member to provide telephone interpretation. In other cases, when there's no local interpreter available, staff should use the services of a professional telephone interpreting company. To access telephone interpreting services, there must be a contract in place or an agreed method of payment. This requires prior proper planning. Providing telephone interpretation is not too different from face-to-face -face interpretation. If you plan to provide such service in the patient's home, here are some things to consider. Confidentiality. Ensure that the patient and you may speak freely without being overheard. Appropriate telephone hardware. Convert a normal phone headset by using a splitter device, thereby creating a headset for the patient and provider. If the patient does not have a phone line at home, a cell phone with speakerphone capability is an alternative. Technical difficulties. Cell phones are not the best choice of hardware due to static and voice quality and must be passed back and forth if no speakerphone capability exists. And lastly, cost. The permanent charge for professional telephone interpreting is well worth it for short encounters, but may be cost prohibitive for longer encounters. This cost should not deter the healthcare worker from capturing vital information. Let's see how an outreach worker uses telephone interpreting. Hi, Mr. Lopez. My name's Jack. I'm from the clinic. Maria couldn't come today. Maria. Donde esta Maria? Oh, no, no Maria. No Maria today. Mr. Lopez, do you have a telephone? A telephone I can use? Good, thank you. Hello, this is Sarah. What is your access code? Hi, Sarah. Our access code is 6565. Thanks. And what language do you need today? Spanish. Just one moment, please. Hello, this is Yolanda, the Spanish interpreter. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm with the TB clinic. I'm at the home of Mr. Lopez, who speaks Spanish only. Okay, I will interpret everything you say. So please speak clearly and in short phrases. This will make the interpretation go more smoothly. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself to Mr. Lopez. And if you don't have separate handsets, you'll need to pass the handset back and forth so I can interpret for both of you. Please pass the handset to Mr. Lopez now so I can tell him what will happen. Okay. Mr. Lopez, please. Mm -hmm. Bueno, señor Lopez, me llamo Yolanda y voy a ser su intérprete el día de hoy. Voy a decir a Jack todo lo que usted me diga, pero no se lo voy a decir a nadie más sin su permiso. Le pido que hable claramente y en frases cortas para que le pueda interpretar correctamente. Y si no tiene usted dos bocinas de teléfono, tendrá que pasarse el teléfono entre usted y Jack para que les pueda interpretar a los dos. ¿Está bien? Está bien. Por favor, pásele el teléfono a Jack para que le pueda interpretar. Gracias. Ok, Mr. Lopez. Uh, María no pudo venir hoy para darle su medicina. And I couldn't find an interpreter to come with me, so I'm going to be using the telephone interpretation services to help interpret. Uh, I'm here today to find out how you're feeling and to give you your medicine, okay? 
Señor López, María no pudo venir hoy a darle su medicina y no pude encontrar un intérprete que me acompañara, así que voy a usar el servicio de interpretación por teléfono para que me ayude. Vengo hoy a ver cómo se siente y a darle su medicina. Ah, gracias. Por favor, pásenle el teléfono a Jack para que le pueda interpretar. Okay, so, how are you feeling, Mr. López? ¿Cómo se siente, señor López? Me siento bien. I'm feeling fine. Have you had any rashes at all? Are you eating well? Are there any other problems you've been experiencing? Muy bien, me da gusto saberlo. ¿Ha tenido usted algún sarpullido? ¿Está comiendo bien? ¿Ha tenido problemas de cualquier clase? He estado comiendo muy bien. Now, Maria may be back tomorrow, but if she isn't, I'll come to give you your medicine again, and I'll need to use the telephone interpreting services again, okay? Muy bien, muy bien, gracias. Es posible que María regrese mañana, pero si no es así, yo vendré a darle su medicina y usaré el servicio de interpretación por teléfono de nuevo, igual que lo hicimos hoy. ¿Está bien? Sí, está bien. For more information about choosing a professional telephone interpreting service, please refer to your viewer's guide. So, we hope you found this information useful. We focused on helping healthcare providers understand how to work effectively with interpreters. This video also serves as an introduction to the field of interpretation for bilingual staff members who are requested to help interpret in the TV setting. Additional interpreter training is highly recommended for staff members who continue to serve in the role of interpreter. We witnessed how to conduct pre-sessions between the patient and the interpreter, and also between the healthcare provider and the untrained interpreter. We employed three styles of interpreting, consecutive, simultaneous, and sight translation. We also used a variety of tools to promote accuracy and completeness to support the primary relationship between patient and provider. These tools included proper positioning, hand signal, the use of first-person voice, the use of third-person voice for intervention, clarification, and transparency, and note-taking. We demonstrated how to use telephone interpreting out in the field, and all of this was done in a confidential and respectful manner. These skills help achieve the goals of successfully facilitating an interpreted session and helping people to communicate accurately and completely when there are language barriers. This video is intended to be a resource that supplements ongoing healthcare interpreter training. Your viewer's guide also expands on the information that's been covered and provides additional resources. We wish you success in communicating effectively with limited English proficient TB patients. On behalf of the Francis J. Curry National Tuberculosis Center, thank you for watching.